Kendall is starring as the mistress on BBC One now, as Peter McHenry as the man in her life. This is BBC Two. Convictions, the programme published in Radio Times as the first in the new series. Is this your car? pair of tits, isn't she? <laughs> Good evening. Tonight I'm joined in the studio by the Labour MP Ron Davidson and by the former Conservative Cabinet Minister Sir Ian Gravesend. Good evening. Sir Ian, you recently crossed swords with Mrs Thatcher over government policy which resulted in your much publicised demotion from the Cabinet. Yes indeed, I would just like to say that although I do disagree with many of Mrs Thatcher's policies, I am still very, very frightened of her indeed. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, what changes would you like to see in the way that she's running the country? Well, I think I'd like to see less emphasis on the economy, privatisation, defence and education, and more time devoted to the weather. <laughs> the weather? Yes. That is why we in the Conservative Party should be promising to make the weather better. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> the Tories are now promising to make the weather better. Everybody knows that the last good summer was in 1978 <laughs> under a Labour government. Your bank holidays were a disgrace. Thirteen years of Tory misrule between yeah. 1951 and 1964 and it pissed it down every day. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ron, that's absolute hogwash. Well, you know. I'll tell you, let me tell you now that a Labour government would make as a priority to put money into the inner cities and make it very, very sunny there. Could I just ask where this good weather's going to come from. No, 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 let me finish. Within two years of a Labour Party taking power, Liverpool, Manchester and Sheffield would have average year-round temperatures in the high uh, 80s. This is mm. pure fantasy, surely. And, and, and sandy beaches with palm trees and little <laughs> trees. <laughs> why should, un why should unemployed people get sunny weather anyway? I mean, there's no incentive for them anymore. Well, the unemployed are perfectly entitled to sunshine. The people I'd like to see getting the bad weather are the rich who can afford to pay for their own private weather. Well, the weather in Russia is terrible. So much for socialism. Well, let me tell you, it's been nice and sunny in Cuba since Castro got yeah, I'm here. So, I'm no sorry, I'm sorry, gentlemen, I, I have to interrupt you there. No, no, Sorian, no, Sorian, no, Ron, I'm terribly sorry I have to interrupt you there as we are now going over live to Soweto to join our South African correspondent, Michael Fish. Why, Why won't we warm? That's what I
How's the coffee? Mmm, lovely. How's your diarrhoea? <laughs> Inspector Reginald Bribe, Easy and Sergeant Adolf Porno were hot on the trail of the notorious Mr. Big, whom they had traced to Villa Grande in Spain. Good evening, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Good evening, miss. Would you excuse us for a couple of tits? Ticks. That's what Mr. Big, is it? Well, she could be related to her. It's a possibility. You're looking for Mr. Big? Uh, in a manner of speaking, miss, yes. Well, he's my father. And he'll see you in the library. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, he wasn't there, sir, was he? Superintendent, you see. He blames me. He always blames me. He blames me for the press getting older than Mr. Big Day Barkle, see? <laughs> I've got to find some way of showing the superintendent just how brilliant I really am. Yes, indeed. Well, you get the ruler and I'll get the two short planks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to arrest someone. I know, sir. I can't tell you anything, Inspector. Honest. I sell whelks on the corner of Hawsey Road. I'm innocent. So, you won't talk, eh, Jacko? Well, there's only one thing for it. Oh, no. Yes, it's electrodes on testicles time. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, the equipment, porno. Oh, no, sir. <laughs> Everything I know. Oh. <laughs> Go on, give us one more electrical surge. <laughs> <laughs> you know one thing you notice as you get older. I want to understand. It's like our time passes so quickly, doesn't it? Does it? Yeah, I mean, one minute you're a young man with your old future in front of you. Yeah. Next minute. Oh, 60 seconds has gone by. <laughs> no, I mean, do you know it is over 20 years since Sergeant Pepper came out? Is it really? 20 yeah. years. Oh, oh, dear, oh, dear. Makes you think, doesn't it? It does. Makes me think I ought to buy it sometime. <laughs> you never heard Sergeant Pepper? Sergeant Pepper. Oh, it's only the best record ever made, is mate. It? Is it? It was 20 years ago today. <laughs> Sergeant Pepper told the band how to play. It's going out and out of dates. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds more. Oh, it's brilliant. 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 Yeah. Do you know, do you know something? Sergeant Pepper was the first record I ever bought. Was it? Really? Yeah. 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 Well, you nicked him before that. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was, I was a bit of a tear away in those yeah. days, but what days they were. Oh, they was. The they 60s. The 60s, days. The yeah. 60s, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, can I tell you something? The young people nowadays, they've got no idea. No, of course they don't. They don't even know they were born, do they? No. Well, they weren't. <laughs> they weren't born. They weren't born. No, yet. they didn't even know they wasn't born. I mean, they don't know. But, but yeah. OK, look, nowadays yeah. there might be some good rock That's groups right. around. Yeah, Obviously, you. people nowadays like listening to, to today's bands. Yeah. But can you honestly tell me, mm. in the last ten years, has there been anything to compare with something really great like Chirpy Chirpy Cheap Cheap? <laughs> No, there wasn't much to compare with it then. Well, no, it wasn't there, really. Oh, those were the days. Do you remember that? Swing in London. Yeah, where was that? <laughs> London. London. Swing oh, in yeah, London. London. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. England swing like, like a pendulum, pendulum do. do. Yeah. yeah Centre right. of the universe it was. It was. Yeah. yeah. Centre of the universe. For, yeah. for, for youth culture. That's right. Rock music Rocky and fashion. Music and from music. the King's Road in Chelsea to Carnaby Street in... Uh, yeah. 
uh, just off Oxford Street. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. London was the place to be. That's right. <laughs> Where were you living then? Devon. Oh. <laughs> No, but it's fantastic. It was, do you remember those days? Yeah. The 60s was one big loving. Yeah, it? it was for me. Was one it? big loving behind the bus shelter in 1967. <laughs> I didn't get another one until 1979. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, I was very into the hippie culture. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was very influenced by all the West Coasts, you know. Mm. Well, you would be down in Devon, I should think. Yeah. <laughs> no, West Coast America. How do you mean? Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was... I was one of the beautiful people. Yes, I was, yeah. It was a bit before I met you, of course. Yeah, I yeah. think it must have been, huh? <laughs> it's been as ugly as sin since I remember. <laughs> that. Tell, look, tell me, yeah. remind me, who was the who was the big rock star who choked to death on his own vomit? Jim Morrison. No, 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 the other one. Uh, Keith Moon. No, no, no. Um, Dennis Joplin. No. No, Mama Cash. No. Frank Ifield. No. <laughs> um, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Jimi oh, Hendrix. Yeah, that's right. What about him? Well, he choked to death, didn't he, on his own body? <laughs> really, really, who'd have thought it? Yeah. Yeah, mind you, great stuff, wasn't it? Jimi Hendrix, the music. Oh, that was my favourite. I watched, how did that one, that big he come out? How did that go? It went to jam. Uh, oh, yeah. You're thinking of, um... No, no, that's stupid. That's Jimmy Page. Oh, you're thinking of... Oh, that's... Yeah, that's yeah, unforgettable that's stuff. Yeah. Marvellous tunes. Yeah. Marvellous. Who wrote that? Uh, Lionel Bart, I believe. Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it takes you back, listen to that music, yeah, and it, it takes you back. Do you remember, do you remember all those the fights, the bank holiday fights down oh, in Brighton? Okay. On the beach with the mods and the rockers? Do you well, remember of that? Of I remember I was there, mate. You wasn't. Oh, well, yeah, I was right in the thick of it there, mate. You, yeah, well, you, yeah. Did you, I, you know, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Were you a, what were you, a mod or a rocker? No, I was a dick chair attendant. <laughs> I like, race up and down the beach, chasing them, them rods and them muckers up and down. I go up and down, up and down, and they never give you no money it's or nothing. What and they a just funny... Just oh, yeah, it must have been terrible. But it was a terrifying time, that. Because you noticed everybody was very... What they used to say was very tribal. Was it? Everybody yeah. was part of a tribe, you know what I mean? Like, come in... Because, I mean, in those days, of course, I was I was a mod. Was you? Yeah. Because you're a skinhead now, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. What about you? What were you? Well, me? Oh, I don't know. Well, I mean, what did you look like? Well, I had, I had long hair, obviously. Well, you, got, well you, had, you had sideboards, didn't no, you? No, no, we had a cupboard to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what sort of clothes did you get? I wear, like, a big purple shirt, right, yeah. with, with twirly-whirlies on it, like that. What, paisley sort of thing, right, isn't it? yeah, with a big nine-inch collar. Oh, yeah, a big collar. I had a 42-inch <laughs> kipper tie, like that. It was a huge Oh, thing, like yeah, I get, yeah, I know. And yeah. then I had... Uh, did you have flared trousers? Uh, well, to a certain extent, yeah, I had, um, I had them sort of purple, velveteen, crushed moon pants. <laughs> oh, what, you mean like the ones you were wearing the other night? <laughs> that was the ones oh. I was wearing the other night. And then I had a big Afghan coat, like, made with a hairy bitch. Right? Oh, yeah, And then yeah. I had the beach, and then I had a little tattoo saying, I love Simon D. Oh, there, I get the picture. Yeah. I get the picture, yeah, yeah. So what, what do you think I was then? Uh, a bit of a prat, I suppose. <laughs> Useless gunships drown rats to both German spies. Don't relax until Grandma's sober. Grams is ripe and under gooseberry sky. John had that extraordinary ability when writing songs. He'd see a line in a newspaper, it could be anything, and he'd mold it into something really quite beautiful. And then his imagination would just. <sighs> unbelievable. I read the news this afternoon. It's naughty knickers we in the subway sun. On another occasion, Lennon saw an old circus poster. It became the inspiration for his song, The Old Circus Poster. <laughs> he holds he and his acrobats and clowns and several other brats are here to <laughs> Before we turn him into glue, the horse will dance a waltz or two by your hands. Dull, so I shall spend it out of Miss Gold at George's house. 
<laughs> well, it's really weird, that thing about Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Because um, everyone said it uh, spelt uh, LSD, right? But actually, if you think about it, it spells L-I-T-S-W-D, which is Litswood. <laughs> and actually, Litswood is a little uh, village in Wales where John used to go on his holidays, you know, as a kid. So it had nothing to do with drugs? No, absolutely nothing at all. No, it was just hype, that, you know. What about this song? Desperate remedies, useless gunships, drown rats, you boats, German spies. Don't relax until the plan is over. Guns is right in the gooseberry sky. <laughs> stoned out of his mind when he wrote that one. <laughs> yes, a lot of people ask me how I get the distinctive and unusual Beatles sound. Well, let me show you something. This is what a cymbal sounds like. This is what a cymbal sounds like backwards. And this is what a cymbal sounds like when Ringo plays it. OK, Ringo. <laughs> the album's release, a rumour got around that Paul McCartney had died. This absurd but nonetheless widespread belief sprang up when various people found what they believed were vague references to his death, both on the album cover and in the gibberish recorded on the out track. Wait, wait, does it have to see Dark the Mop? Wait, wait, does it have to see Dark the Mop? Paul McCartney is as dead as a dodo. <laughs> Good evening. Look, people who complain about police brutality just don't understand. All we're doing is simply leaving a mark so we know who we've eliminated from our inquiries. <laughs> people who brought you the video nasty, now comes the ultimate stomach-churning experience. The video nice. Starring Keith Harris and Orville. Can you take the Care Bears? The horror of Bonnie Langford, the terror of the people's friend. Can you face the stomach-turning ghastliness of synchronized swimming and Thor And just when you thought it was safe to go back in the playroom, My Little Pony. Certificate. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Well, stop, stop it now and we'll start again. <laughs> To it, she does, doesn't make the effort. Never mind, there's a woman who's big in Peckham, oh, big everywhere. Rumour has it she's on drugs, mainly aspirin and valley. But she makes an effort and falls out, falls a bit behind it. Right, behind. Oh, there we are, that was the excitement of. Uh... Anyway, let's go over there. Oh, just a minute. Oh, yeah, I understand. Oh, yeah. All oh, right. Yeah, well, there we are. In a football match somewhere, the score is 2-1, and both of them from memory. <laughs> so let's go over here, live to sit putt in the shop. It's great putt, that shot. Uh, and let's go over to it live, then. Well, it was live when we filmed it, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? Bloody rubbish, isn't it? Well, who's going? Don't think me bloody self, don't I? That's typical, ain't it? I'll get Frank Boff, don't I? It's bloody trouble. Come on, Lynn. Come on. Thank you, Dad. Ooh. Here we are, it's the young Daly again. He's limbering up for a bit of putting, and all our middle oats are resting in those hands. All right. 
God help us. I'll shut up for a bit and let us just wonder at his marvellous athleticism. <laughs> I certainly don't. No, well, you can't read, Mel, so... <laughs> no, but if, if you did read the Sunday Times, you may have seen a, an interesting article which went under the headlines, BBC Pay Shock. Yeah, did and, that yeah that's right. Well, it actually turned out to be a revelation about Terry Wogan's salary. <laughs> and apparently, somebody in the BBC had uh, leaked... <laughs> the details of Terry's salary, which apparently stands at 400,000. 400,000, which is an extraordinary amount to earn in a year. Yes, an even more extraordinary amount to earn in an afternoon. <laughs> now, we would just like to say how disgraceful we find this. It's terrible. It's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely dreadful. Appalling. Uh, in the interests of fairness, we ourselves have uh, raided the BBC files in the middle of the night. And in my hand, I have details of some of the fees paid to the nation's favourite faces. So, where does the licence fee go? Well, <laughs> those two seem to get a fair slice of it. <laughs> two Ronnies, PLC, or as they're known in the business, the fifth channel. <laughs> Joining them in the big league... <laughs> Bob's full bank account... <laughs> And, of course, Les Dawson and his blankety-blank check. <laughs> and topping the lot, of course, this man. <laughs> Michael Fish. Weatherman and international playboy millionaire. <laughs> In a pioneering deal, Michael gets over 200,000 per forecast. <laughs> and over four times that amount if he gets it right. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mm. These two, yes. Yeah. Um, well, unfortunately, <laughs> there, there doesn't seem to be a record no. of what no. these two did. I think, I think it's sort of vulgar to discuss money anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is when you earn as much as we do. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I've got a great promotional idea for Geoffrey Archer's new book. We're giving away 2,000 copies at Victoria Station. <laughs> Harry, can I have a word, please? What about? It's about Michael. Stand by, stage manager, Frankman. Don't ignore me. I've got to talk to you about Michael. Oh, 
Can't it wait, Tony? No, it cannot wait. I am not going out on that stage again unless you do something about it. Oh dear, what's he done now? He hasn't done anything. Tell me, Michael is dead. <laughs> dead? Yes, he's dead. He's dead as a door. <laughs> he's dead as a doornail. He's been dead since we started this run. Has he? He was dead at the read-through. No, I think he was just tired at the read-through. <laughs> Terry, you spend most of the show shunting him around in the Black House and tying him up to the furniture. You know he's dead. I'm sorry, I, I just didn't know anyone had noticed, that's all. But does everyone know? We have to say his lines for him. <laughs> he's just... Everybody loves him, you see. He's such a dear old pro. And I haven't say, don't get me wrong, I love him too. He's a lovely, lovely, well, dear, is. sweet old man. And I, I love working with him. It's just, he's beginning to smell a bit. And I, <laughs> I, could, I could have a word with him about that, OK? Yeah, Terry, okay. he's got to go. All right, I promise, by the end of the week. Promise? Promise. I wouldn't mind. He's getting all the laughs. <laughs> Because the human body is the way it is, you need a deodorant that you can trust. A deodorant that really works. A deodorant like new, extra powerful Always. We subjected new Always to the ultimate test. We took two recently dead people. One we covered with new Always extra powerful deodorant. The other we covered with another leading brand. Then we buried them. And six weeks later, we dug them up again. How did they smell? First, the one covered with another leading brand. Oh, dear. But what about the one covered with new Always? Well, there you are. New Always Extra Powerful Deodorant. It keeps right on working, even after you don't. television was watched today by allegations in Parliament that the BBC was heavily overstaffed. We go straight to Television Centre for an on-the-spot report. Here at the BBC, the allegations are being taken very, very seriously indeed. Well, and on that sobering thought, that's all from us. Good night. in the middle of a lake. No, I don't know why. You get a star turn in, alas, Smith and Jones. It's 3 